Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. Welcome to Bug Fest. Yay! <laughs> Thank you all for coming out. I hope you've enjoyed your day here at the Museum of Natural Sciences here in Raleigh, enjoying Bug Fest. Uh, raise your hand if you ate a bug today. Anybody? Anybody oh, taste yeah. some of our buggy treats in Cafe Insecta? <laughs> raise your hand if you saw a bug today. Yeah, there's no, that's got to be everybody. We've got eight floors of the museum, four in this building, four over there, and there's, there's bugs crawling everywhere. Well, not everywhere. They're not like over here with us. <laughs> but just about every exhibitor, and there are dozens of them here, have all sorts of live animals, cool things to see and do. So I hope in your visit today you got a chance to take a lot in and learn a little bit about some of the cool stuff that's going on in the world of arthropods and all of the cool buggy stuff that we do here at the museum. Bug Fest here at this museum is actually the largest single day celebration of bugs in all of North America. Uh -huh. So that's really cool, right? We have that right here in Raleigh. I think it's just because we love bugs more than everybody else. Nobody else has quite figured it out yet. But we know what's going on here in North America. For our last and final presentation of the day, uh, we have set up a really interesting guest. This is, no, I'm kidding. This is Natalie Cooper, everybody. No, I know you're all here to see her, don't. <laughs> <laughs> so Natalie Cooper is first daughter of North Carolina, uh, but the second daughter of Governor Roy Cooper. Is that right? That's yeah, what I was, I'm, okay. the, I'm the second first daughter. The uh, second <laughs> first daughter uh, of the governor of the state of North Carolina. And Natalie, you brought one of your friends. Yes, this is Daisy, the first mantis of North Carolina. She is an orchid mantis. Uh, the Latin name is Hymenopus coronatus, and she is an L6, meaning she has molted five times, and so she has two more molts to go until she's an adult. And yeah, I've had her for a little bit over three and a half months, and she is a little over four months old. So yeah. So Daisy's a little over four months old. Yeah. How small was Daisy when you first when you first got her? Well, when I first had her, she was smaller than a pea, I'd say. Um, when they're born, they actually, orchid mantises, when they're born, they look nothing like orchid mantises. They're black and orange, and they're like little ants, basically. But Instead when I, of this really brilliant white. Yeah, and they can a lot of variety. Uh, she comes in a lot of varieties, actually, and she changes colors a lot. She sometimes is a lot pinker, or um, and sometimes they get browner, greener. Um, yeah, they just are flowers. <laughs> so th I know that's what's when you first brought Daisy over, mm -hmm. I knew that it was an orchid mantis, and I had seen photos from the First Pets of North Carolina's Facebook page. Yeah. As I went and looked around a little bit to figure out what an orchid mantis was, I had no idea. Yeah. And there are pictures of Daisy sitting on the flowers, and I couldn't tell at first which was which. Mm -hmm. It was tricky. Yeah, she, she likes to play hide and seek, and you know, that is what an orchid mantis does in the wild especially, they blend in perfectly with the flowers. They are a sit and wait predator. You know, a lot of mantises, a lot of predators, they'll, you know, pursue. They'll, she'll sit there for as long as she wants and will just grab it. And it works, you know? So this quite adorable, very tiny mantis mm -hmm. lies in wait yep. on a flower and then when a tasty morsel comes by, jumps out. Faster gobbles. than a blink of the eye. Faster she, than a blink of the eye. Yeah, they are super, super fast. And a lot of the time she'll actually sit on the branches or on the leaves because it does make her look more like a flower. She's kind of hanging out on the sides right now. Um, but orchid mantis is a species that she'll like sit upright and that does make her even look more like a flower, you know, because she's all with the lobes. Yeah, anyway. So how did you, where did you get the name Daisy? It's a flower, <laughs> she's an organ mantis. I just, I, I thought Daisy? that that was funny, but uh, actually, um, I don't know. You kind of, I, I've always liked the name Daisy ever since I found out when I was younger. That was actually one of the contenders for my name. Like, you know, oh, Daisy okay. was my name. Uh, but um, that was not decided upon in the end. And then there's Daisy Ridley, who's in the Star Wars movies. and. Um, you know, I thought Daisy would be a good name. 
and you know, even if she turned out to be male, I was like, I'm just gonna keep her just Daisy. Stick with it. <laughs> Why not? Well, you and I were talking about this before. How do you know? Because I can't look at Daisy and mm -hmm. and tell. I, do, I don't know how to tell. Mm -hmm. How do you know it's a female? Well, it actually, you do need to wait until they molded a, molted a couple of times, but a female will have six segments, um, you know, on their abdomen, and a male will have eight. And, you know, but another thing with orchid mantises, once they get bigger, you can see a little band around her, like kind of a above, you know, kind of below her, like little, and uh, for females, it's green, and for males, it's brown. But the biggest thing that, well, biggest is having to do with size, that they're, the difference between orchid mantises is their size. Um, I know you know about, like, you probably maybe learned today about sexual dimorphism, and orchid mantises are kind of an extreme example of that. Um, really? Females are significantly bigger. They can get almost up to three inches in length, um, like the female. And the male barely will get, I mean, won't get to an inch, maybe an inch maximum. So you've got that, and then you've got that. Wow, so, okay. Um, it's really big. So when they're an adult, when they're adults, you can tell really easily. <laughs> I was wondering, because you had said that she, Daisy only had two more molts mm -hmm. before she, she'd be an adult. Mm -hmm. And she's, what, an inch tall? Yeah, so you could tell at this point, since uh, because all adults have wings, and both of them can fly. I know that sometimes they say only the males can fly, but females fly too. They really fly sometimes. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. That sounds like a good story. Yeah, um, I did time. have another orchid manis before her, and uh, that one really loved flying at my face all the time. Coming right at you. I could always see when she was about to. She'd be like, like don't you fly on my face. <laughs> but uh, she would sometimes. Then. So okay. how many pet mantises have you had? Um, I've had three before her. Um, my first mantis was called a ghost mantis, and that's like a dead leaf mantis. Uh, they kinda, and uh, his name was Nosferatu, like because he kind of always hung upside down. He kind of had looked like a shadow. And uh, my second one was also an or orchid mantis named Sybil. And then after her, I had a um, Hirodula membranacea, which is a giant Asian mantis. And she was like kind of what you think of when you see a mantis is pretty big. Um, and she, she kind of got the celebrity status eventually. You know, like once my dad was elected, we had this page that's called First Pets in North Carolina. And her name was Winifred, but I usually called her Fred. So Fred was like, it was like a day of mourning when she died, pretty much. Aww, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For for any pet. Oh right? yeah, absolutely. But you know, for a mantis, and it is difficult because mantises don't live that long. You know, it's really having them live much over a year. You know, you that's not much of a thing. You know, like I think. So about twelve months would be the max would be the longest. Uh, yeah, okay. like, you know, I'd say if you're a one in captivity, maybe, it really varies from, like, male to female. Males typically live significantly uh, shorter lives, but uh, females will live a little longer. I mean, you know, there's no mantis doctor, so you can't really, you know, tell. But can't really, right. Mm -hmm. There is no mantis doctor. Unfortunately. So, so Daisy is one of the first pets, and she's the third, fourth. Fourth mantis. The yeah. fourth mantis. Uh, what other pets do you have? What's it like to have this sort of a pet? <laughs> and then do you have others? Uh, we do. We have two cats, and um, we have kind of an honorary dog. My older sister has a dog named Ben, and he's over pretty much all the time. Okay. And so, um, yeah, he's our dog. So, yeah. my, I, You know, one of the cats is kind of like my cat, but, you know, he's just a black cat. And, yeah, uh, he would eat her. So uh, we keep them separate. Oh. Yeah. Uh, the cat would try to eat the mantis. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He is, uh, yeah, he, he, we keep them very, very separate. But, yeah, you'd want to look out for that, wouldn't you? Yeah. How do you care for something this small? Like, well, what does it take to care for this type of a pet? Well, you know, it is actually a little bit cheaper. You know, you do. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to get as big of live, you know. I mean, she will need a different enclosure. When she gets to be an adult, it's going to be need a little, but yeah. So one of the things is, you know, their prey. And, you know, that is one of the things, you know, I really have to make sure I see her. She, uh, she yeah. 
Uh, oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> she eats fruit flies, and, you know, there was a Drosophila species that she used to eat, but now she eats a bigger species called Hydae, I believe. But, yeah. Uh, so you've got to feed her fruit flies. And, honestly, I would say that that's, I mean, I don't mind it, but, you know, they'll get all over the place. You know, you're, you've got to make sure that one doesn't get away. Flies all over the place. Well, I actually get flightless ones. Um, there's, um, that is totally, I would suggest investing in that, you know. Yeah, especially if you have an older mantis that needs a lot more flies, you know. You can catch them for a while, but, um, you know, that, that was what I would say is, like, the main thing is just they need small feeders. Taking them out can be a little stressful sometimes. You know, they're, you know, I'm not having her out today mainly because she can't fly, but she'll hop, and she's just small, get lost. She's shy too, you know. The bug fest is a big event with lots of people. Yes, we, it is. I um, definitely would not want the first pet of North Carolina getting lost in the museum. Yeah, I mean, you know, she's pretty Wouldn't still good, and prob. I mean, she does like to hop sometimes, but you know, she's. And that's why she's very still right now. I mean, they are a still species, but, you know, she's kind of in a defensive pose right now. You know, that's with her forearms. But, yeah. So you've mentioned this a couple of times to me before, a defensive pose. So it's, it's the arms up? Yes. Um, I can try to. Okay. So here are their, fo uh, here are their forearms, and they kind of do like this, you know, kind of protecting, and they'll... Yeah, because a lot of people talk about when they see a mantis, and it's like, it pinched me, you know. Um, but, yeah, no, that's just their defensive mechanism. They don't bite. Some people, you know, say that they bite, but um, okay. so they're no defensive. biting. They just punch you in the face. Yeah, it's like, you know, karate. They'll, like, psh, and, you know, typically it doesn't hurt that much. I mean, especially with especially with her, you okay. know. <laughs> I was about to ask if you had ever been hit by, um, by one of you know, once or twice, um, you know, she doesn't do it that much. She's probably done it more than any of my other mantises, but, you know, she'll, you know, when she's scared. Um, but she, you know, when we're alone, she's, like, more chill, you know. And she eats honey. She'll eat honey off of my hand, off my fingers, off my arm. Um, you know, that's how you get them to trust you a lot of the time. Bribe them with sweet treats? Yes, absolutely. Oh, yes, it does. Um, but it is actually not just bribery. Um, this hasn't been completely confirmed, but I don't know if a lot of you know about honey and its antibacterial properties. Um, sure, that yeah. part is true, but there are some things that mantises get, some kind of like diseases that seem to be bacterial and that they'll die from. And a lot of the times when people give, see those symptoms and give them honey, it's, it has a, you know, sometimes gets better. And I've never had them, I, I've only had four, I guess, but I've never had them get bacterial infections. I fed them all honey. It could be preventing it. I don't know. But oh, yeah. well, th so, well, that's really interesting then. Yeah. Um, so do lots of people actually keep pets like orchid mantises? You know, it's a very niche hobby. Uh, there is a website called the Mantid Forum, and like, I don't know where I would be without it. I think there's a lot of the time usually someone who comes here that's from the Mantid Forum and has their own thing, but, um, you know, it's a small hobby. There's no big corporate entity for mantises. There's no, like, for lizards and birds. You don't get and Purina mantis chow. <laughs> no. Right. But, you know, it's also, there isn't really, like, farming going on. There isn't, like, none of the species are really, like, vulnerable, threatened. I mean, the only, you know, thing is, like, habitat loss could be, you know, potential. But, you know, there isn't anything, like, of people taking them out of the wild. Like, I don't know how many generations have passed like what well, you would have to go back to find one in the wild for Daisy because they're breeding. So that was another question I was wondering earlier was how you actually got this one. So do you get it as, I don't know, an egg? Um, I did. It? I got her as an L2, um, which is, you know, after her first molt. But, um, you know, because I've made friends with a couple of, you know, mantis people. So I know like right when, because Orchid mantises are very, very popular. You know, they are, you know, if you, a lot of people even who don't know much about bugs love orchid mantises. And so they'll sell out pretty quickly. And they can sometimes sell for really absurd prices, like $80 okay. or something. And that's absurd. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I just, 
you get it from them and they'll ship it and you want to, I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> uh, do we want to have any, I don't know if anyone has questions or not, but you So yeah, it, we'll yeah. turn to the audience. So yeah, if you have questions, you can raise your hand. I'll bring a microphone to you. If you're on the second or third floors, you can ask questions too. You'll just have to yell at me over the balcony, but give me a wave while I'm down here so that I know to call on you. Awesome. I'm going to jump up. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Hi. Uh, as a predator, will she attack a laser pointer? Pardon? As a predator, will she attack a laser pointer? Um, I do not. I have not tried that, but I feel like some more aggressive species might because, well, I, I don't think she would because, yeah, she is a species that really lies in wait. And try, but, you know, I had a mantis last time. She might have done it, but they are colorblind. Um, surprisingly. They have five eyes, but still are colorblind. But yeah, um, I don't think she would play with a laser pointer, but my cat would if I brought him here. <laughs> uh, who, were you asking a question first? I think you, I saw you raise your hand first. Um, so why are they called first pet? Uh, <laughs> well, um, that actually comes from my my dad is the governor of North Carolina and you know like with presidents you know there's like first lady is the wife or first daughter first son um, you know my mother is the first lady and uh, the daughters are first daughters and so she's a first pet because she is <laughs> has that relation to us Mantis named after the wild crats that like it's like a fast running one Pardon? I'm sorry. So do, you, so do you know about a mantis that was on the show Wild Kratts that was, could run really fast? Well. Oh, it's named after the Wild Kratts. So somebody discovered one and yeah. named it after the TV show. You know, I actually don't. But the thing is, there are over 2,500 uh, 2, species of mantis. Um, and that keeps going every day. Um, so yeah, I haven't heard about that, but um, oh, okay, yeah, that does make crazy. sense because my last mantis did sometimes football tackle prey. So um, yeah, a lot of species do go after. Or, but yeah, that's cool. I'll check that out. Um, what does what does your pet eat? What does she eat? Well, right now she eats fruit flies. Um, she has a bigger species of fruit fly that she eats right now. They're called um, high day. Uh, and once um, she gets a little bit bigger, she'll have some house flies. And um, then even bigger, I give them blue bottle flies. And those are like slightly bigger than house flies. And honey, I'll give her raw honey. Pardon? Does she like water? Actually, yes. Um, I Every other day or every two days, I give her a spritz of uh, distilled water around the sides of her enclosure. And she will sometimes you know, eat, drink some water. And you do want to make sure that she's hydrated and spray. Um, yeah. So yes, they do drink water. Where do you find her in the wild? Where do you find them in the wild? Uh, an orchid mantis, you typically find them in rainforests like in Malaysia. Um, you know, a lot of, yeah, so Malaysia is where you mainly find them, but, you know, pretty much any rainforest around Asia is where you'd find them. Um, where do you get your um, fruit flies and where do you buy her? Well, um, there are a lot of places you can get them from. If you're on the Mantid Forum, you know, I have a lot of friends that are, you know, they set up shop, they breed mantises. Uh, it's a very small thing. Where I specifically got hers, I, I have a friend and she has a place called Pantera Pets. Um, she sells terrariums, uh, fruit flies, but you can get them from a lot of different people if you go and uh, check it out. But uh, yeah, um, there's a lot of different places, but typically you kind of have to go online because most places sell crickets. And uh, yeah, she's obviously too small for a cricket. <laughs> Where'd you get your enclosure? Where did I get my enclosure? Um, I got it from a place called Pantera Pets. Um, she, uh, she's one of my uh, friends and she will make all these enclosures. Um, it has like rocks, it has um, 
coconut substrate as well as sphagnum moss, and um, that's a ficus plant, so it's all living. And there's uh, some li living organisms in there. There's spring tails, um, and they'll eat pretty much anything that she doesn't eat. Um, they'll, you know, because mantises do like, you know, have some kind of defecation process, and they'll eat that, you know, so it keeps everything clean and in balance. Yeah. If you're on the second or third floor and you have a question, you can yell at me now. Okay. Anyone up I'm there? I'm come right back oh. down here then. This will be uh, the last audience one that I have time for. So do the mantis eat the, the springtails? You know, when they're very young, they will sometimes. Um, you know, I think when she was really young, she used to eat some of them. Uh, but, you know, you really have to be very small because they're really, really, they're mi called microfauna. And you know, that's something I would suggest if you have an orchid mantis, because they're not an easy species to take care of. You know, you really want to have like a living place for them, you know. So, you know, I would suggest, a, you know, a larger species typically it's better to keep. I don't know, I, I know. How, how much time do we have? So there's time for one more question, okay. and it's my question, not which it. is, I'm curious as to what interests you about orchid mantises such that you've had several of them as pets and um, continue to keep them and take care of them? Well, I'm interested in so many things about mantises. You know, one thing I really do like to have something to take care of. I mean, I know it is, you know, it is not something you want to take lightly. You do want to research what you do, but I do really think that they're such fascinating animals that people don't know a lot about. Um, if you ever want to talk to me about, you know, mantis facts, you know, they have five eyes and they just look at you and it's just so interesting to see what they possibly see. Well, you said five eyes? Yes, they do. Um, so those two big things that you see right there, those are her compound eyes and uh, they see depth and um, movement. And she has three little eyes in the middle and you could actually, if she would look over at you, you could see them, but they're called ocelli and they pick up light. But they actually can't see color. And, but it's just so strange. I'm like, what, what does she see? She can see so clearly, but can't see color. Like, what do I look like to her? You know, I just think that's cool. And they're really cool to watch eating things. I know that's kind of macabre, but. Um, I don't think yeah. so. We watched a tarantula and a scorpion eat crickets earlier today. Yeah. Fascinating. So I can only imagine this very dainty predator going after a fruit fly being just as exciting. I mean, and I also love every kind of mantis too. I've had um, two other species. I had a ghost mantis and a giant Asian mantis. And honestly, species like that, I would suggest if anyone here wants to keep them as a pet, that would be something I would suggest getting a, you know, kind of a starter species looking on the mantid forum. Everyone, I know so many people who want to jump in and get an orchid mantis because they're so pretty. But, you know, as you can see, she's kind of shy. You know, she is, um, you know, has certain needs. She it is best for them to have some kind of like live enclosure or just something that has a lot more humidity. She needs to be kept warmer. You know, some can just be kept at room temperature, even as low as like 65 degrees or, but you know, she, you don't want to get her that low. But yeah, anyway, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was just plugging, uh, you know, I just wanted to make sure like responsible ownership and everything. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Natalie, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you. You too, Daisy. Everyone, thank you for coming to BugFest. You uh, have probably five minutes left of indoor activities in this side of the building. The first floor of the Nature Exploration Center across the bridge is going to be open until 7. And then all of the activities outside on the plaza and on Jones and Eden Streets are open until 7, so hit up Cafe Insecta, take in some of the other vendors, get a Bugfest t-shirt, and thank you for coming to Bugfest here at the Museum of Natural Sciences. Bye, everybody. <laughs>